We're going to take you to Himley Hall, which is in Himley Park in Dudley, because Nigel Farage, the UKIP leader, has just began to speak about defence. Let's join him. The 1990s, and it continues today. Uh, and yet, the narrative in Westminster is that that's OK, because there are no votes in defence. People don't care about defence. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and that is the belief inside Westminster. And I have to say that UKIP believes that is wrong. We believe it's wrong in principle uh, because actually it is the first duty of government to defend the realm. Uh, but it's also wrong in practice uh, because actually we do care hugely about defence, about our ability as a nation to defend ourselves, about our ability as a nation to defend our commitments around the world, perhaps with the Falklands being to the foremost in many people's minds. So people do care hugely about it, and perhaps they care even more about the well-being of the men and women that serve in our armed forces, and especially the way in which they're treated, or perhaps in many cases sadly ignored when their service is over. So I think Westminster is wrong about this, uh, and UKIP says defence really does matter. It is very important. It should be a much bigger part of this election campaign than it currently is. Um, and we will commit today uh, to saying that we do believe this country should meet a 2% target of its expenditure in line with NATO expectations. UKIP <laughs> believes we should do that. Now, of course, that does mean, over the lifetime of the next Parliament, to meet that target, an extra £16 billion will have to be found. And I know that our critics will say, oh, well, this is typical of UKIP. Uh, they will say they're going to boost defence by saving money on the overseas aid budget. And the answer to our critics is quite simple. And we actually think that to be upping the overseas aid budget at a time the government has decimated our forces as the wrong set of priorities, and yes, we would use some of that budget. And as far as our veterans are concerned, and especially some of those who've come back from Afghanistan and other conflicts, uh, physically or mentally impaired, yes, we do think something more should be done. There is something called the military covenant. It is supposed to be the bond between those that serve the country and the government and the rulers of the country. Um, and it's our feeling that that military covenant has not fully been honoured over the course of the last decade. We think a big change is needed. And we see inspiration in other countries that have done this far better than we've done. Canada and many others. And so what we think is needed is a veterans administration with a veterans minister separate to the Ministry of Defence reporting directly to the cabinet and somebody with the authority and the ability to bring together all of the veteran services that are currently provided plus of course vitally the growing the burgeoning charity sector in this field so UKIP believes that a veterans minister is something that is needed uh, and, and, and we will push hard in the next parliament for this to become the case. We also feel some terrible mistakes were made back in the 1990s uh, when a handful of military hospitals, hospitals specially dedicated to dealing with the especially mental conflicts that some of those who've been in, 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 in serious battle situations suffer from, we think closing those hospitals was a mistake. Uh, it left us very ill-prepared to deal with many of the challenges from Afghanistan, Iraq and elsewhere. Uh, and we would like to see at least one dedicated military hospital put back in place in this country to deal with veterans and especially those who've got mental problems. That, we think, would be the right thing to do. <laughs> and we would like to see far more help but perhaps to begin with, recognition uh, for a problem uh, that the more you examine it, the more worrying it becomes. Estimates are that up to one in ten of people living homeless on the streets of this country, 
Up to one in ten of them are former service men and service women who have fallen upon hard times, who have become dependent either on alcohol or on drugs and for whom life has gone badly wrong. And we would like to see a fast tracking for people, for ex-service men and women, to get mental health services. We'd like to see the establishment of some hostels dedicated to men and women from this background. And in putting these things together, and in doing these things, I think the government would then honour the military covenant, something that I believe the overwhelming proportion of the British people want our government to do. And we could also do something else for a very small sum of money that would make a lot of people very happy. Uh, you'll notice that there are many uh, Cold War warriors throughout the 1950s and 60s who, when they attend a Remembrance Day service, don't have a medal of any kind to wear at all. And what we're proposing is the campaign that's now been running for some time. UKIP gives its full backing and its full endorsement to the campaign for a national defence medal so that everybody who has served in the armed forces at any point in time will at least have a medal to wear on those Remembrance Day parades. For the cost of a few hundred thousand pounds, millions of people would feel more engaged. What a good and a positive thing that would be to do. So we would do our best over the course of this election campaign to make defence and veteran affairs a debate and an argument that we can have with the other political parties and to engage millions of the British public to do so too. Uh, and to that end, uh, it won't all be me, to that end, uh, one man in UKIP uh, will be at the forefront of doing this and I would like to introduce please uh, former Army veteran, uh, UKIP MEP, Mike Hookham, to tell us more about UKIP's plans for defence and veterans affairs. Thank you, Nigel. We'll uh, leave that uh, news conference there. Nigel Farage pledging to meet a 2% of GDP target